Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the world of AI. In today's video, I'm going to be showing a little bit more about this new LLM, which is another large language model that is focusing on the autonomous factor of artificial intelligence. And basically, it's an AI automation platform that has been basically designed to specifically create an efficient method to instruction and implementation of AI across a broad board of different providers and this is something that we can see with Langchain as well as this new LM Chameleon LM which focuses on another plug and play implementation of AI generative content. Now what makes this actual LM a little bit more versatile in terms of a solution is its basic task management system as well as its memory feature that focuses on a range of different tasks including web browsing. Now the platform is designed to support a powerful plugin system that allows the users to actually execute a wide range of commands and this is something that we're going to be analyzing in today's video. Not only are we going to be showing you guys how to install it but I'm going to be also showing you some of the key features, the roadmap as well as the benefits compared to other LLMs. So with that thought, let's get right into the video. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed or checked out any of my other previous videos, I highly recommend that you do so guys. There's a lot of content as well as a lot of value that you will definitely benefit, benefit from. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. Please subscribe guys as it would mean the world to me. Turn on the notification bell for future updates as I'm continuously dropping a lot of load of value. So with that thought, let's get right into the video. Now, as I talked about, this is a new autonomous automation platform of an AI application. And one of the significant advantages of Agent LM is its growing support for numerous AI providers and models. And we can see that with this example over here. Basically, it allows it to cater to diverse applications of different models that can help accelerate with the content generation. And it continuously evolves to ensure that the whole actual application is up to date with the latest advancements in the field of AI. And what is really great about this is that some of its key features, and that's something I'm going to be emphasizing a little bit more. Now, Agent LLM has several key features, which we can see over here, and it makes it a valuable tool for managing AI instructions as well as implementation. And this is another use case of different things that you can use this LLM for. Now, one of the most notable features is its adaptable long-term and short-term memory management system. And this is something that we can see with different autonomous AI systems that are being released. Baby AGI doesn't have this feature. However, there's other agents such as like Auto, our Teenage AGI, Mini GPT, as well as, uh, sorry, not Mini GPT, but Micro GPT, which are these new autonomous AI platforms that are starting to take on the tool of having a memory system, which is another feature that allows the system to learn continuously, as well as have this management system that can basically generate and facilitate better contextual generative content with the AI. Now, in this case, it allows the actual application to efficiently store and recall information and it makes it very versatile for solutions and a wide variety of t different tasks that a user might have now another important feature is its versatile plugin system and this is something that we can see over here and this is basically equipped with a variety of extensional models as well as commands for various ai models and it makes it easy to integrate new technologies and adapt to changing requirements and this is the great thing about llms guys as well as open source projects because you're able to continuously add on as well as get different types of applications that can be integrated with other llms to basically provide you the best type of output as well as the integration to provide you the best generative content using ai and this is something that we're going to be seeing later on in the video as to how it generates different types of context with different integrated systems. Now, another thing I wanted to note is that Agent LM is also highly compatible with multiple AI providers. And one of the things that I wanted to note is that we can see on the left right side over here are the different commands as well as the tools that you can adaptively add with its system. One of the notable ones is obviously OpenAI's GPT, GPT 3.5, which is the free version of OpenAI's GPT, as well as GPT 4. And what you might need to do is provide the uh, actual API key, which is the paid one that you can provide to the actual application to give you the best 
resulting answers from its retrieval on the web as well as its data sets. Another thing that is integrated with this application is using Ooga Booga, which is another web UI textual generation. Uh, and it's basically used to show as well as have a good design in task automation as well as a new way to actually show your outputs of your generation on this application. Another thing that this application uses is Llama CPP, Fast Chat, Google Bard, and different other integrated LLMs and other projects, which we can see over here. And these are basically compatible with different multiple AI providers. Now, in addition to all these features, Agent LLM is also able to provide a web browsing and command execution capabilities. And it basically makes it so much easier to navigate the web and execute different various commands. Now, it also offers different code evaluation supports as well as a seamless Decker deployment, which we will check out later on in the video. And, and as like another key thing is that it also integrates hugging face for audio to text conversation. So not only is it focusing on just the contextual part, but it's also trying to continuously expand its autonomous AI platform to a different type of reach, which could be like TTS as well as a video descriptive encoder. And these are some of the things that they're continuously working on and expanding. So this is just the start guys for them as they're going to work towards different platforms and they're going to integrate different like uses as well as another app applicable way for it to generate different types of content. Now, we also noted that with their web, app web application features, it's also able to offer a different integration with platforms such as like Twitter, for example, you're also able to get a better example of GitHub being integrated, Google, Dolly E, and different things that is easy to integrate with other services and application. Now their text-to-speech option features Brian TTS as well as Mac OS TTS. And they're also, I believe, featuring Eleven Labs, which is also available with their application. Now with the continuous growth with their features, as well as its application to grow the actual generative content, they're able to continuously expand and support for new AI providers. And it's easy to integrate some of these advances with their application. And this is something that they're going to continuously add on as well as basically update as they get more integrated applications for their actual AI or for their LLM, sorry. Now, in terms of actually comparing it with other LLMs, obviously you got to keep in mind that this is an autonomous AI application, which might differ to other LLMs as different LLMs have different use cases. But in terms of comparing it with other autonomous AI agents, Agent LLM basically compared to other LLMs include its adaptive memory management system. It's able to have long-term as well as short-term memory use cases, which can adaptively focus on different cases as well as like pull out different informations as well as data that can like build off of and provide you the best contextual report that will definitely like oblige, but with your objective and it's versatility with this plugin system is something that I really liked as well as its wide compatibility with multiple AI providers. And this is just a start guys, because they're also focusing on their web browsing and command execution capabilities. It's already implemented in the application, which is great, but it's something that they're refining and they're continuously working on to provide you the best beneficial report as well as the application. Now, in terms of actually showing you a demo, now, obviously we're going to run it with our local desktop, but I'm just going to show you guys a little demo as to what it, how it works. Now, this is something that Josh, which is one of the contributors of the project he had showed, and you're able to use your web UI application with their Docker system. And you're also able to use Ooga Booga text generation, uh, web UI which is easy to access. So I, I'm not gonna show you how to install it using uh, Ooga Booga, but I'm just gonna be showing you how to actually install it locally. But in this case, you're able to do a lot of the autonomous functions as well as different like autonomous like applications that you can utilize and extend to different plugin systems. And you're able to do the same things as another autonomous system, such as like AutoGPT or Baby AGI. And you're able to extend on that by utilizing different tools, which we can see over here. And that's one of the great things, guys, because these other applications pull as well as use different types of cases with their application. 
uh, for, whereas this agent uses diff like a wide variety of multiple sources to get the best objective uh, to get the objective completed now in this case uh, Josh is saying that write a tweet about AI so what the agent does is have this chat history and obviously we have the same type of flow as other autonomous agents where it researches it brainstorms tackles multiple different tasks at once and then it provides you the relevant information that you're requiring and another example is where we can see a more descriptive understanding where it starts off with the thought the reasoning it starts to then formulate a plan as to how we're going to approach this and then the command is set to what you will need to do and then the task creation agent responds with the following tasks as well as the following response to basically execute your overall objective and one thing that's great is that you're able to save this in your memory doc as well as its data and it can provide you the best context contextual reports later on if you have something related to this and you can utilize different options and commands to actually get you the best response but obviously in this case he only has google search for his response you can utilize you can play around with it and plug in different types of commands with different like encoders as well as different applications to help you get the best generative response in this case he just used google search because it was quite menial task and he was able to get the objective solved now in terms of installing it guys what you need to do first is it's recommended that you have the docker set up and basically this is a free application that you can get on windows apple as well as linux so what this does it's basically a user interface on your system and you can easily access it with the system and you can get it onto your local host which you can just type in with the local host and it'll pop up once you finish installing so what you need to do is download this application once you're done you need to access the project's root file and once you're able to do that you have to command this actual prompt and once that is done you're able to access the actual application going onto the web ui and this is something that you can do by clicking on this link and i'll leave all the links as well as the download links in the description below as it's easy it's an easy way for you to access now in terms of installing it locally what you'll need to do is you need to do two different prompts and first things first you're going to need to download git so make sure you download download it for your processor uh, i'm going to be using windows so it's completely free and once you're able to do this, it's basically an application that's going to clone the repository onto your desktop and download it efficiently. Secondly, you will need Python, which is the code encoder that will basically tweak and install different parameters with the actual application. And lastly, is Visual Studio Code, which is a code editor of my, like, it's an optional code editor. It, you can use the command prompt of your actual app, uh, processor. But in my case, I'm just going to be using this because it's more appealing. And I have a whole, in every video, I basically emphasize why I use it. And it's because it's visually appealing and it's easy to access different lines of code. So I highly recommend that you get this as it'll be your best optimized code encoder as well as your code editor. Now with that thought, let's get right into the next step. And basically what you want to do is open up command prompt. And once you have done that, you, what you want to do is copy the repository code. And what you can do for to do that is go to the code, copy this link right here, go down and go onto the actual code and say type in git clone paste this and what it will do is start downloading the packages with the git application now what you want to do is go into the actual application and what you do is type in cd so you just have to write cd space agent dash lm and once you're in that folder you need to download the actual packages into that folder and what you can do is copy and paste this which is this command right here. And what it will start doing is start downloading the packages into the file. And once that is done, we'll get onto the next step, which we can start downloading as well as tweaking the actual application using our code editor. So once that is completed, you will get the files installed into your actual desktop and your agent LM folder. And then you can open up your code editor. In my case, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. You click open folders, and then you click on the actual agent LM folder. Now, once this will open up you can trust authors do this at your own discretion obviously and what you want to do is go to the dot and the example file what you can do is take out the example take this out click enter and this is where you're going to be configurating as well as tweaking around with the different 
basic like prompts as well as the objectives with the actual application now one thing that you need to know is that in terms of actually using different applications you need to provide it certain things such as like providing your chat gpt user and id now this is one thing that might be a discretion to you guys because of privacy issues so use maybe not your paid account maybe another free account that will actually help you use this if you want to use extensions such as hugging face uh like api then you would have to input your api key over here as well as its audio to text model you can use this uh, in this case it's already using this so you don't need to actually install it or i mean provide anything else but you will need to install these packages if you're going to be using the respective like tools obviously in this case if you're going to be using github as well as these other applications you'll need to provide different types of keys as it's not free guys because you need to provide your own api keys and once you're able to do that you can also provide your bar token as well as your open ai api key and once you're able to do that you just click save and what you can do now is you can start playing around with it in its actual main pi folder and what you can do is run this actually by clicking the play button here and it'll start running the actual application which is easy to use and that's easy as that guys that's how you can actually run agent gpt on your actual computer and obviously there's different things that you can tweak around with as well as having the docker set up as well as running it on your local host which you can do over here when you input your different api keys and that's basically it for today's basic demonstration of agent llm guys uh, in terms of its contributions as well as its usage at the moment there's no clarification as to how you can use it in terms of commercially or as in terms of research uh, because in this case it's a very small project and it's something that they're focusing on one thing that you might need to understand is some of the actual configurations there's a lot of different like tactics as well as instructions as to how you can do it so i'll leave the link down in the description below as to how you can provide these different informations as well as tactics to actually help you out and with this talk guys i hope you found this inform like video informative uh, if you want me to do more different types of videos like this please let me know i have a lot of different content that will definitely benefit you guys so if you guys haven't seen any of these previous videos i definitely recommend that you do so and with that thought guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time peace out fellas